Hey guys, Gareth here with FCP here. Welcome back to their DIY video. Today we're replacing a water pump and a thermostat on an F15 X5 XDrive 35i. So all the steps we're going to do today are going to apply both to the F15 X5 XDrive 35i as well as a rural drive variant, the SDrive 35i. And with that said, it's also going to apply to the F16 X6 XDrive 35i and SDrive 35i. Both N55 engines, uh, parts are shared in between, the platforms are basically the same. So if you have one of those vehicles, everything we do in this video is going to apply to you. Typically speaking, uh, the most common failure item on these cars is going to be the water pump. Realistically, we can say 60 to 75,000 miles is the most that you're going to get reliably out of the pump. Since these are external to the engine and it's driven electronically, so it has an electric motor in there, it's all electronically controlled via duty cycle. The most common failure item on this is going to be the controller inside the pump itself. The motors are a permanent magnet motor, uh, so it's not really the motor that fails, it's usually the controller that's inside the pump that fails. Uh, while you're in there, it makes total sense to replace the thermostat. The thermostat is called a map characteristic thermostat, so it has different operating modes based on demand. And uh, it makes absolutely no sense to go in there to replace the water pump without replacing the thermostat. If you need to replace the thermostat for whatever reason, same situation, doesn't make sense to replace the thermostat without replacing the water pump. They're in the same general area. You have to drain the cooling system no matter what. So we recommend doing these at the same time together. And this happens to be a kit that we sell on the website. So what you see here is what you get when you buy the kit. With that said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the tools you need to do this job, and we'll go ahead and get right into it. Uh, really, it's not that much in terms of sockets, but uh, some of the other things like pliers and extensions, those are going to be the things that you probably want to pick up if you don't have it. Uh, but your basic size is 16 millimeters to remove the reinforcement plate, uh, 13 millimeter for removing the reinforcement bar within the engine bay. You're going to want a 10 millimeter socket a E12 Torx, a six millimeter socket, uh, specifically for some, uh, for some of the really difficult to reach hose clamps, they're all six millimeter drive. T25 Torx, a universal uh, socket, you're gonna see why in the video, that comes in handy. A variety of extensions, variety of ratchets. Uh, torque wrench, ideally if it could do torque angle, that's, that's great, but a torque wrench that can do upwards of 80 foot pounds of torque. If you have access to impact guns like this, particularly with an eight millimeter and 10 millimeter flip socket, this can be super useful for removing the splash shields underneath the car. And uh, some of the specialty tools, if you can get access to a vacuum filler like this, that's gonna make bleeding out the cooling system much easier. Also these pliers, super useful for uh, removing the grommet that holds onto the charge pipe on the cold side. Uh, you'll see what that's about. And if you have a super long flathead screwdriver like this, very useful for prying things that are kind of difficult to remove or gaining access to areas that are typically hard to reach or you're not gonna have a lot of leverage on with your hands. So with that said, these are the tools you're gonna need. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So first thing we're gonna do before going underneath the car, uh, we're going to loosen the expansion tank cap. Uh, from here, uh, we need to remove our cooling fan assembly and this um, strut support here. It's not really a strut brace, but it's like the front structure of the car. It's a support. Uh, so we're going to pull this off. This uh, air snorkel comes up, kind of just clicks right out. And then we'll pull it from here. It comes right off. We'll put it off to the side. We have this bar here. Um, this supports our hood release cable and some electrical wires. So before I remove this entirely, I'm just gonna pull these wires up out. Uh, there's a little plastic clip on here. You could, of course, try to remove the clip, but chances are you're probably just gonna break it. So it's better to leave those in place and just pull everything out first. I'm gonna take a 13 millimeter socket and remove these four 13 millimeter bolts. You try to slide this out of the way without putting too much pressure on our expansion tank hose right there. So we're gonna slide it to the left of the engine bay, right if you're facing it, and kind of weasel it up out of the way there. And these are the clips I was telling you about. Like I said, you can try to release them, but chances are you're probably gonna break it. So I, I just prefer to leave them in. Now we have this little plastic cover right here. This holds, uh, I guess the best way to explain it is this sort of just locks everything together. So I'm gonna remove this right now. There's four T25 screws that hold this in. Next, um, before we can move this up out of the way, I do have to pull the fan up and out. Um, so the, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that hold the fan in place and make it kind of tricky to get up and out. You really gotta take your time in this uh, just because you risk breaking either the fan 
or some of the other parts that are attached to it. So I want to make sure that you take your time on this and be careful. I'm, I'm going to choose to push the hoses out of the holder like so. It should just come right out. And uh, these are now kind of loose. This is what we want to see. Next, we have our fan electrical connection over here. Uh, it's a pretty big electrical connector. It's got two locking tabs on it, so you got to squeeze the sides. So you can see the tabs right there. Put your thumb and your finger on those tabs. Once you release them, you'll kind of hear a click, an audible click. And then you can just pull it up and out like so. And now from here, uh, what we have left, and I think now is probably a good time to talk about this. The fan sits uh, on this uh, radiator support or the radiator bracket. Uh, there's two of these locking tabs. Uh, basically the fan just sort of sits in and it clips into place. So you do need to release those, but before you can move anything, uh, you have this rubber holder over here for the charge pipe. And you want to get that released first because if you release the fan and you start pulling it up, you're going to pull on this plastic charge pipe and you risk breaking it. So uh, don't, don't get ahead of yourself on this. Uh, get this rubber holder out of the way first. So to get this rubber holder out of that mount, I'm going to take these long needle nose pliers. I have these two holes that you can kind of grip onto. And now I'm just going to simply pull it up and it should slide out just like that. Yeah, the easiest way that I found to get this out is with these long pliers, like the double X, I think is what they call them. And then these are the holes that I stick them into and just pull it right up and out. Um, you could do it with short pliers, of course, um, but first time you see this, uh, this is where you need to pull from. And it comes out pretty easily, as you see. So before you pull the fan out, you need to be aware of the uh, two mounting tabs. You have this one on the left side of the fan. Uh, of course, it'd be to your right if you're facing it from the front of the car. You have to depress this little, this little lock tab up here. This mounting tab physically on the fan itself, will physically, will, it will actually fold in and go flush so it'll clear the upper radiator hose. And then on the other side, you have a very similar uh, release mechanism, but it's really important to know that this side folds in and that's a genius design because there's no way you could ever get the fan out with the upper radiator hose attached to the radiator. So we'll get that going first. Once you get it far enough up past that tab, you'll be good. So as I was explaining before, without the ability to fold that tab in or that mounting tab, you can't actually get the fan up and out. So on the uh, left side of the fan shroud, they give you the option to fold the whole thing in like so. And now clear is coming out, which is a great design. Somebody thought, somebody thought about you when they came up with that. And now you can just kind of pull the fan up. Uh, obviously make sure that nothing is caught on it as you're pulling up. And then eventually you'll kind of have to come to a point where it'll just slip right up and out. Yeah, so that's all the work you need to do from the top. Um, only thing I'd say is when you're pulling that fan up and out, uh, the AC hoses are gonna fight you. So as you're pulling the fan out, make sure it's not caught or you know, nothing is getting pulled up with the fan that shouldn't be. Uh, but now that we've done everything up top, uh, we're gonna lift the car up and we need to remove some stuff from underneath. And that'll give us access to the water pump and the thermostat. And then we'll be able to drain the coolant and we'll go from there. Next up, we're gonna remove our splash shield and I'm also gonna remove the reinforcement plate uh, primarily because when I go to drain the coolant, I don't want it going back that way. Uh, so I'm gonna to try to leave the bottom portion of the car open as possible. To remove our splash shield, all it is is a bunch of eight millimeter screws. Reinforcement plate is held on with six 16 millimeter bolts. Uh, water pump is kind of almost directly above it and there's a feed hose from behind. Uh, the reason I'm removing this is when I disconnect that upper, upper hose, I don't want coolant to pull up on this and make a mess. So. I'm just gonna get it out of the way and uh, hopefully it may clean up after doing this a little bit easier. All right, so now we're gonna drain the coolant. I've got our uh, drainage tray underneath here. I'm gonna disconnect this hose that comes into the transmission cooler thermostat. Transmission cooler on these cars is a oil to water heat exchanger. So you have your lines that come in and then you have your cool side and your hot side. This hose right here feeds from the thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead and pull back this lock tab. Uh, if you ever worked on a BMW cooling system before, 
you know all about these lock tabs and these quick disconnects. So we're just going to pull it back. And now we have to lever it up over the connection on the thermostat. A lot of cool in the system, so expect it to take a little bit of time to drain. And these quick disconnects can sometimes be really stubborn to remove. Uh, they're sealed by an O-ring, so sometimes that O-ring doesn't like to cooperate with you. So you might have to move it back and forth to get it off. All right, so our hose clamps uh, on the water pump are six millimeter drive. Uh, that's only if they are original hoses and have been previously removed and replaced by somebody else, or the hose clamps rather. Um, for this demonstration, I'm coming in from the side here. Uh, truth be told, you can actually probably get to these hose clamps from the front, but I want to show you where they are and, and how uh, we remove the hose and everything. So. At no point through, no time during this removal process are you ever really gonna remove your drainage tray from the same area because coolant is just gonna to continue to pour out. No matter what you do, that's just the nature of the beast here. So I'm using a six millimeter uh, socket on a quarter inch ratchet here. Now that that hose clamp is loose, you can come here with a hose pick and sort of break the seal of the hose and be prepared for more coolant to come out. Now we have one more hose to remove. Again, six millimeter drive. And there's probably gonna be some coolant in this as well, so be prepared. My favorite part about doing these water pump jobs on these uh, N55, N54, N52 engines is you always end up with some coolant running down your, your arm into your shirt. So, you know, if you have a poncho available, even if the weather person on TV hasn't predicted rain, if you're doing one of these water pumps, bring your rain jacket. And now for this upper hose, I'm just running a, a hose pick around it so that I can get it to come off. Don't have a lot of prying room on this upper hose, so you're gonna have to try to pull it from the side as much as possible. Be careful with the hose pick to not poke a hole through the hose, because then you're replacing it. And uh, I can tell you right now, replacing this hose is a pain because it's uh, attached to the coolant transfer pipe. Before we get ahead of ourselves here, we're going to disconnect the electrical connector uh, for the water pump. It's here on the front of the water pump. Uh, here on the front of the water pump, just one locking tab. You should be able to pull it right off. It's easier to do this uh, when it's when the water pump is still connected to the engine. If you had to do this with the water pump floating around, that might be a little bit more of a challenge. So now that we have the hoses off the water pump and the electrical connection disconnected, I come in here with an E12 socket and I remove two of these lower, or actually not remove, but loosen these two lower mounting bolts. I'm not gonna remove them entirely because we need some stability for the upper bolt, which is gonna be a little bit more challenging to get to. So I wanna leave these loose at the bottom before I completely remove that upper bolt. Yeah, for that upper mounting bolt, it's very difficult to get at it from underneath only because the charge pipe is in the way and removing the charge pipe is additional work that I don't think you really need to do. Um, if you remove the side cover here, uh, that's part of the splash shield, you can actually get to that upper bolt with a uh, 12 inch 3 8 extension or quarter inch extension E12 and a swivel socket. Or if you have a swivel E12 socket, that'd be super useful as well. Uh, but fortunately, these are not torqued very tight. Uh, once they break free, they come out basically by hand. So coming at it from outside here was the easiest option for me. And now we can just go ahead and unthread these lower bolts. They come out super easy. Again, these are not torqued very tight, so. Now the water pump is free and we're just gonna let it rest there because we need to actually pull it out of the engine bay from up top. So just gonna let it settle right there We'll lower the car down, we'll pull the thermostat, we'll pull the water pump up, and uh, then we can go about reinstalling all this stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull our water pump out. It's pretty sure this is the only way you're gonna be able to get it out. I don't see any room below, so just uh, as you're pulling up, make sure you're not dragging it across the back side of the radiator. You don't wanna damage any fins or anything like that. There we go, water pump out. Remove our lower quick disconnect on our thermostat now. Now we'll uh, pull.
pull this hose down off the bottom of the thermostat. I don't think there's gonna be any cooling in here, so. Ugh. There isn't, that's nice. Leave that hose off to the side. Now we have two hose clamps. Those are gonna be six millimeter drive. So we'll loosen those up first. I'm basically gonna remove it from the uh, radiator last. A Little bit of a different design here uh, with the thermostat being connected directly to the radiator. So this is essentially is acting as the lower radiator neck. And you know, we're just loosening these clamps up until the point that they can come off. We we'll come in with our hose pick and break that bond. And it looks like this one's gonna slip right off, which is great. And it did. And now we have this other hose that we need to remove. Appears to be sitting a little more flush, so this one might be a little tricky. Let's see if we can just pull it. Actually, I got a better idea because this hose goes to the ever so famous uh, coolant hose flange. We can actually now just disconnect the thermostat from the radiator, pull it up, and then pull the hose off separately. So I'll do that. Again, quick disconnect here on our thermostat. Connection to the radiator, pull that up. And rock it back and forth to compress that O-ring. These uh, quick disconnects are all sealed with O-rings, so even if you remove that tab, they can still sometimes be a little finicky to get off. Wasn't expecting more coolant to come out, but that's my fault because you should always expect more coolant to come out whenever you disconnect the hose. So, surprise me. Now that we got that off the uh, radiator there, we can disconnect our electrical connector. I think at this point in the job, it's also worth noting that you're gonna be doing a lot of cleanup before you reassemble everything. Um, just kind of the nature of this job, unfortunately. Connector just kind of pulls off and now we can uh, snake the thermostat up and out of the engine bay. This other hose is still connected, but that's fine because that goes to the cylinder head and to the ever so famous coolant hose flange that loves to fail on these. So with that said, it's also a great time to consider replacing that while you're, while you're doing this job. Thermostat's here. And uh, now I have better access to get this hose off. Unfortunately, it is tight on there. Super tight, actually. To be honest with you, uh, I'm actually gonna replace the coolant hose flange on this car. Um, so seeing as how absolutely tight uh, this hose is, I'm just gonna disconnect the coolant hose flange from the cylinder head now. It's two 10 millimeter uh, screws, and I'll just pull it with the hose still attached. I'll have a little bit better access with this out of the engine bay to uh, pull this hose off. The hose just sits very flush and the hose clamp was tightened from the factory, so it kind of mushroomed the end that wasn't clamped. And uh, now it's just kind of a, a pain to get the pick under there. Uh, so two 10 millimeter screws. That's all that holds this coolant hose flange onto the cylinder head. I want to replace that with an aluminum flange, get ahead of the curve on this one. The hose never fails, it's always the flange. We've covered that in a lot of other videos, even have a DIY on how to replace it. Um, we've replaced it in a whole bunch of other videos, so I don't think we're really gonna to touch base on that in this one. Um, but I'm just letting you know that this is the perfect opportunity to upgrade this flange right here and prevent any future failures because that is probably outside of the water pump and thermostat. This is going to be the thing that fails in the cooling system before even the radiator in most cases. So just be aware of that. Yeah, I'm actually uh, glad I'm doing this now because you can see the inside of this flange. The plastic is turning brown. Which, uh, you know, when you see these things completely fall apart, the plastic is pretty much all brown. So that's why whenever you do a water pump uh, or a thermostat, it makes sense to do this now. So it's just held with two 10 millimeter screws and you just pull it out of the cylinder head. Um, if this thing is completely just absolutely on the verge of failure, it's probably going to break when you pull it out. But the plastic is so brittle, you can literally go in there with a pick and just 
break pieces of it off and pull it from the cylinder head. So it's not a huge deal, uh, but makes absolutely no sense to not service this flange. And now that we have um, the thermostat completely out, I'm just going to go ahead and try to thinner pick to get under this lip and uh, try to get the bond broken, which looks like we're having some success now. There we go. Done. Perfect. All right, here's our new thermostat. Um, before we install it back onto the radiator, uh, what I do is I come in here with a little bit of antifreeze and I'll lubricate the sealing O-ring. This will make sure that when I push it on to the fitting on the radiator that the O-ring won't roll or get stuck or get pinched. Um, usually O-rings, like, you know, if it's gonna be exposed to oil, you can use oil. In this case, it's exposed to antifreeze, so I'm just lubricating with antifreeze. That'll also help uh, aid an in install. So anything that you can do to get the O-ring to seat easier is definitely worth the extra step. And then of course, this can only go on one way. So we're gonna push it up until it seats itself. And then we'll drop the little lock ring. You can kind of feel it just go into place. You heard that nice little uh, click. So we know we're good there. And take this uh, lower hose here. This goes down to our trans cooler. I'm just taking a look at the O-ring that's in there because what'll typically happen on these style quick disconnect hoses, if the O-ring is damaged or deformed, uh, it will never reseal again. So if you need to replace a hose, it's better to stop what you're doing and do it now versus put everything back together and find that you have a leak. Uh, so the O-ring in this, is in perfectly good shape. So I have no qualms reusing this. Similar situation, just kind of push this up into place. We also have our electrical connector for the thermostat. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and plug that in while we have access to it. So that just clicks right in. Uh, the coolant hose that we originally removed with the thermostat, I've assembled or I've installed it with a new flange. So that's already done. Again, we have uh, videos on how to do that. I'm lubricating the inside of the hose with a little bit of antifreeze so I can slip it on to the thermostat a little bit easier. Obviously make sure you have the clamp on the hose before you install it. And I'm just going to orient the hose clamp exactly how it was when we removed it. It was pretty, it was positioned pretty well, so I'm just going to maintain how it was. And this was a six millimeter hose clamp. If you're interested in knowing, uh, BMW does have a torque spec on these hose clamps. It's three Newton meters. I'm not going to be torquing those down with a torque wrench, but if you would like to, that is the torque spec for it. This last hose is a little awkward to get on, but there's an arrow uh, on the thermostat and then there's a line on the hose. That is the indicator for how you should have everything lined up. So I'm just making sure that those arrows are lined up and that line is lined up and then that'll be the correct orientation for how the hose needs to be installed for when we get the water pump back in. And now we're gonna tighten this hose clamp down. Six millimeter drive. Uh, again, three new meters from BMW uh, if you want to torque them. Uh, I'm not torquing these, I'm just hand tightening them. The uh, key more than anything else is to not over tighten hose clamps. So, you know, you can employ a little bit of sense with how tight you make these. That's why I like these flexible hose clamp drivers uh, from CTA. Not that they make it impossible to over tighten anything, but you can really feel when the clamp is uh, pretty much maxed out. And I like these for that. All right, before we go back underneath the car, I'm gonna fish our new water pump down through the gap between the radiator and the front of the engine. 
because just like how we had to do this to remove it, we need to also do it this way to get it in place. So just uh, fish it down there and position it in a safe place and then you can uh, rearrange it from underneath once you're down there. Due to the tight constraints here uh, where the water pump needs to go, I'm going to slide these hoses back onto the wa uh, water pump. That way I'm not fighting them. I'm not gonna actually clamp them down yet. It's just to kind of keep them out of the way. And also because the hoses are bent and preformed, uh, it's gonna help position the pump a little bit. Like instead of having to like push the hose out of the way while I'm trying to get the bolts back into their mounting holes, um, having the hoses on the pump uh, is just one less thing to fight with. And it's really important to just install these bolts. They're brand new, you need to install uh, new bolts when you're putting a pump in. They're, uh, believe it or not, torque to yield. So my suggestion is gonna be to replace them. I'm only going to install one on the bottom loosely. I'm gonna try to get the one on the top next because that's gonna be the one that is a little bit more of a challenge compared to the others. Now that the upper bolt's in place, we can finally install this last lower bolt. Size on the water pump bolts, uh, E12, Torx, and uh, Torx expects me 10 new meters plus 90 degrees. I gotta put the hose clamps on the water pump. The important thing here is when installing a new water pump, it gives you the opportunity to uh, reorient the hose clamps in a way that's actually reachable in the future. Uh, obviously, when they assemble these cars in the factory, most of the stuff is done outside of the car. Uh, so hose clamps are positioned, what's convenient then, but it's not necessarily convenient for you when you have to actually work on it. So I repositioned these hose clamps in an area in which I can get access to them easily from underneath versus having to work on them from behind with a ratchet. The other thing too is, I don't particularly like tightening hose clamps down with a ratchet because you can't really feel if it's getting tight or not. You know, using a screwdriver or a hose clamp driver, uh, you can feel it getting tight that way. You know, ratchet, you're gonna put more leverage on it and you run a risk of breaking the hose clamp. So. On these worm style hose clamps, at least on these applications, I always try to put them in a position in which I can get to it easier in the future. Not that I uh, want a water pump to fail, but if it happens, I wanna be able to service it a little bit easier uh, down the road. So always do yourself a favor and uh, put them in a position in which they're easily accessible again in the future. And lastly, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our electrical connector back in for the water pump, push it till it clicks, and we're good. Uh, only thing I'd say down below is uh, we're gonna reinstall all the splash shields and the reinforcement plate after we bleed out the cooling system and run the water pump. Wanna make sure there's no leaks. Easier to do that with everything off, just in case there is a leak, you're gonna see it and it's not gonna make as much of a mess on the under panels. Also, we're gonna have to reconnect our um, coolant hose here to our uh, transmission cooler thermostat. Remember earlier we disconnected the quick release clamp, so we need to reinstall that and we'll put it back on that thermostat and then we'll be done underneath. And actually we're in a really good position. We can uh, start to refill the cooling system, put the cooling fan back in, at least button up the top portion, um, but we'll leave everything off underneath and that'll be the last thing we put back together. So now we're just gonna push our feed for the thermostat back onto it. This is one of those quick disconnects. Remember this one was kind of a challenge to get off. So it's really important that you feel it clicking to place. It should feel tight once it's in place. And I'm just gonna confirm. The good news is they're key. They can only go on one way, but we'll just say there's some ambiguity as to whether it's actually on all the way sometimes. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a push. Make sure it's on. And it is, wanna make sure that's definitely tight and it's locked in place because when we fill the cooling system, uh, that's just gonna funnel right on through and it's gonna make a mess everywhere. So just really wanna make sure that all these quick disconnects are bottomed up and uh, locked in place before we start filling the system. So as we discussed in a lot of other videos, N52, N54, N55, and N20, and N26 engines. Uh, they have a self bleeding uh, system, so you can run the electric water pump 
um, manually by going through the procedure. We'll provide a uh, link on how to watch the details on that. But I also like to take it one step further and do a vacuum bleed on the cooling system. Number one, to make sure that everything is sealed. And number two, try to remove as much air from the system as possible uh, before we get to actually filling it. So using that airlift V2. And then uh, all we're gonna do is just pull a vacuum on the system. And uh, we're gonna let it sit here and make sure it doesn't bleed down. And now uh, we're just gonna give it a couple minutes, uh, make sure that we don't lose any vacuum. Uh, assuming the system is sealed, you won't lose vacuum. You can also see the uh, upper radar hose is actually all the hose is collapsed from the vacuum. And then once we're feeling good that uh, we don't have any leaks in the system, we'll go ahead and suck the coolant in and then we'll run the uh, factory equipped bleed procedure. And then uh, once we're sure there's no leaks, We'll go ahead and button the rest of the car up. All right, so next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our uh, cover plate here for the radiator core. Um, didn't mention in the beginning, you don't have to remove this to do this job. However, you're gonna find that when you're reaching down with your forearms, this can be pretty irritating after a while. So having this out of the way uh, gives you a little extra space and you know helps reduce any discomfort that you're already gonna experience. So, just gonna go ahead and drop it in place. The uh, T25 screws, remember there's four of them. You wanna make sure that everything is lined up and that the radiator is basically locked in place before you send any of these screws through. Then you have two eight millimeter screws that kinda of hold this folding piece here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and drop our radiator fan back into place. Uh, the key here is making sure you're not pushing anything down uh, so your AC hoses, the power wire for the fan, etc. Of course, just like how it fought you coming out, it's going to fight you going back down because of all the stuff that's in the way. So you really want to uh, be careful and uh, take your time working this down. These fans are pretty expensive and you also don't want to rupture any uh, AC hoses either. You're going to get to a certain point in this operation where uh, you're going to feel like sending it down, but before you do that, you want to get here and remember this tab that we had to fold in, you want to fold that back out. Because what you want to have a, a happen here is you want the fan to catch all of its mounts as you're dropping down. You're just going to push all the lines back into their corresponding brackets. A little side note, before you push uh, everything into place, you want to make sure that your uh, hood release cable and the power wire up top because they'll sit on the cross brace. So uh, if you push these in before it's sitting on top, you're going to have to undo all of it. Not that it's related to this repair video, but uh, for whatever tape BMW used on these wires, it sucks. Um, it comes undone. So I'm going to probably end up rewrapping the whole thing at a different date. I'm probably going to use some tested tape on it um, just to keep all these wires together and protected. But you're probably going to notice a similar issue on your car. Whatever adhesive, however this is held together, um, it just doesn't stay together over time. So. It's pretty annoying, it's pretty messy. So if you're so inclined, you can go ahead and rewrap it and make sure it doesn't look like that ever again. Wanna make sure that you uh, reinstall that grommet for the charge pipe. Just push it back in, line it up, drops right in. Right now. Okay. Uh, these are 13 millimeter. Torque spec, probably 20 something newton meters. And then uh, we're gonna make sure that we get our power wire back in these clips. Remember the ones we didn't remove earlier because we're afraid of breaking them. Just make sure that these are routed and clipped back into place like so. And it's looking, it's looking, looking beautiful.
Okay. First try. So first I'm gonna reinstall the reinforcement plate. This is with the 16 millimeter bolts. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I kind of go back and forth in between uh, torquing these to the recommended spec and just tighten them down. Today I'm gonna go with spec uh, 56 newton meters plus 90 degrees. All right, now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our splash shield. It's the last thing that's left. And then uh, the splash shield, all it's held in was eight millimeter screws. So we'll reinstall all the ones we have. We were missing a couple originally, but we're gonna replace those half the fact. All right, so that's how you go about replacing the water pump and thermostat on your F15 X5 xDrive 35i. This is going to apply to any F15 X5 with the N55 engine, as well as the F16 X6. Uh, overall, not a very difficult job. I'd say the most challenging thing is uh, how the hose clamps are located from the factory, kind of difficult to get to. Uh, but, uh, you know, I used a quarter inch ratchet with a six millimeter socket on it, was able to get those off no problem. And I think the biggest takeaway is when you reinstall those hose clamps, position them in a location that you're gonna be able to access them in the future, just in case you need to replace the water pump again in the future, depending on you own the car long enough, or you happen to have some kind of issue later on. Uh, but overall, pretty easy install, nothing too far out of the norm. Uh, I would say the most important thing in this entire job is making sure that everything is tight, everything is sealed correctly before you fill the uh, cooling system with coolant and then go ahead and use the vehicle's onboard self-bleeding procedure, which is super useful, saves a lot of time, works every single time. You don't have to worry about purging air of the system manually. And other than that, pretty easy. Definitely something you can do on your own. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video and hit the subscribe button if you like these videos because we have more on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.